Hi everybody, today we're gonna to start limits. Limits is a very important part of calculus and it's so important that I felt like we should really slow down as I introduce this and I'm gonna break it into pieces. So this is part one, which is just on graphs. We're gonna start by just thinking about graphs and remembering what it means to have an open circle versus a closed circle. An open circle means that the point is not there so things might be on the, each side of it, but it's not defined there, so it's open, versus a closed circle that says that value is included. So we're going to use this graph of f of x, and we are going to find these different function values. All right, so let's begin with f of 8. So for f of 8, I go over to the x value of 8, and I look up. Right, when I look up, I can see that this value is 4, right? So I'm reading the y. So I'm going to give you the x, the x was 8, and then you're going to give me the y, which was 4. So we're going to do that again. This time we're going to look at f of 1. Okay, so f of 1, I go over to x is 1, and I go up, and I can see y is also 1 this time. And one more on this slide, I have f of 4. So at 4, you can kind of see two things happening. You have a closed dot at 2, and you have an open dot at 4. You have this closed dot, so that says f of 4 is going to be 2. All right, so let's try that with just a bigger graph. This one kind of looks like a decreasing line, hits a parabola, takes a jump, becomes constant, and then is decreasing again. So lots of points for us to look at here. We're going to start with 0. I can see at 0, it's going through negative 2, so we've got a negative 2. Um, for b, it says f of 1. So 1, there's an open circle at 1 and a closed circle at 3. I want to use that closed circle of 3. At negative 3, I see a dot at 1. At 2, where it's constant, the y value, so I can put the dot in there. It doesn't look like it's there, but we could put it there, so that says 3. So I don't have to have that dot there, right? As long as I can get the function, if I can read it, I can read the y value. Let's look at f of 4. Now f of 4 isn't very clear. You can see it's somewhere above the x-axis. It's lower than 1. It's greater than 0. So you may have to guess that. Maybe we want to say it's 0.2 or 0.25. So it's OK to estimate. Um, at 3, I can see a dot at 1. At negative 1, I can see down there that it's negative 3. And then at negative 4, go up kind of put a dot in there so you can see it better, and that's 2. The definition of a limit is a function f of x has a limit as x approaches a number c if there exists a number l such that f of x approaches l as x approaches c. All right, there's a lot there that we really need to talk about. A couple things that are really important is the fact that we said number. So l is a number, c is a number. That means it's a single number. So C, I'm only going towards one number, and L is I'm going only receiving one number. So I'm putting something in, I'm getting something out. So we're trying to look at this like relationship, 1C, 1L. That's the first part that's really important. Approaching doesn't say which way we're approaching. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more, but it just kind of means any way you look at it, we are headed toward the same number. Um, our notation, we use LIM for limit. We use x with an arrow, so that says x is going to c. Um, our function is f of x, and we're just saying we're inputting the c and we're outputting the l. So x doesn't have to exactly be c, but it's a number really, really close to c. So it's kind of like we were like 2.9999999, and we're getting to 3. So we're looking at something really close to this number c, and what do I get out? I get out a y value, and that is my l. So that's our thought here. Right. First caution is look both ways, right? So it's just like traffic. You want to look both ways. So what do I mean by that? I mean, when we're finding the limit of f of x as x approaches c, you need to look to the right and the left of f of x to make sure we're getting the same value. So don't just look at x, right? Don't look at the value of c and go, okay, I have my answer. You need to look on both sides and make sure both sides are doing the same thing. And I'll make sure I show you what that looks like. I thought a great way to show you what that looks like is to give you a graph. So here's a graph, we'll call it f of x, and you can kind of see there's two parts. On the left it looks like it's at 1, and on the right it looks like it's at 4, and where it's splitting is at 2. So what we want to know is what happens, right, could we find a limit as x goes to 2? So I have these little runners, and I can see from the left side 
if this guy starts running, what's happening? As we get closer and closer to two, and then it's going to stop, right? What's our y value? Our y value is one. So it didn't matter what it was, right? So if I drag it back again, and I let it go, the closer and closer that I got to two, then I was getting a y value equal to one. But notice that was only on the left side. So let's go up here and look on the right side and say, well, what happens on the right side? On the right side, as this runner starts going closer and closer to the value of two, well, the y value is at four, right? So it's not like it's going to change and jump down here to be with the one. So I have two different values. So if I look on the left, I have a value of one. If I look on the right, I have a value of four. And those two things are not the same. So that's what I mean by look both ways. I wanna make sure the left and the right are telling me the same value when we're looking at the limit. So what do we say when this happens? What happens when our runners are at two different numbers? Then we have to say the limit does not exist and we're gonna write D and E. So let's talk about one-sided limits. We have the left side and the right side and we're gonna have notation so we can keep up with what we're talking about. So we do C plus to say the right side because positive numbers are on the right, bigger numbers are on the right. So we call that C plus. C minus, that's the left side. So anytime I wanna talk about the right side, I'm gonna write C plus. If I wanna talk about the left side, I see C minus. Eventually those Cs will become numbers. So maybe I'll have two from the positive, two from the negative, or three from the positive, three from the negative. Important things to say about that. The limit is X approaches C from the positive side of F of X being equal to the limit when X goes to C from the negative side of F of X equals L says there's a limit and that limit would be L, right? So when both sides are the same, when I look both ways and I get the same number, I have a limit. When the limit as X approaches C from the positive side of F of X is not equal to the limit as X goes to C from the negative side of F of X, then the limit does not exist. And we're gonna write D and E. That just saves us time. You'll see that I'm gonna write D and E, homework's gonna write D and E. It's very, very normal for people to use this notation. Let's try this. Let's use this graph of f of x to find the indicated values or just say that they don't exist. So let's start with the limit as x goes to negative one of f of x. So I look at negative one, I look on the left, I look on the right, and they're both going to the same value of one. Important to point out right now, when I looked to the left and the right and I got one, it was not the same as the value, which was four. So the limit and the function value do not have to be the same. That's not part of the rules. It's just that tendency of where did we think things were going and we thought things were going to one. Total surprise that it ended up being four. And you can see that was my next question. It says, well, what is f of negative one? It was four. That can happen, right? We, Life doesn't always give exactly what we expect, so every once in a while we get a value we didn't know was gonna happen. Let's look at the value of the limit as x goes to three of f of x. So here's three. I look on the left, it looks like one. I look on the right, it's three. So on the left, I'm going to one. On the right, I'm going to three. One and three are not equal, so that says our limit at x goes to three does not exist. So we're gonna write D in E. That doesn't mean we're done talking about three. It means we need to slow it down a little. So here I have, let's look at the limit as x goes to three from the positive side. So here's three, the positive side's on the right, and if I head toward three from the positive side and stop, my y value is three. We can do the same thing with the left side. So the left side of three, here's three, I'm on the left, and I head toward three, when I stop, I'm at a value of one. The overall value of three, so just f of three, is equal to one because I can see that solid circle at the one and the open circle at the three. So when I do the function value, I use the closed or open circle, but when I use limit, I use the tendency. Let's try this graph. Again, I have a graph with a bunch of pieces and we just wanna see what's happening. So the first thing says, let's find the limit as x approaches three from the positive side. So here's three positive side and we're coming towards three and we stop at negative four. If I look on the left side, the negative side, so coming down, I'm also at negative four. The actual value of f of three is this closed dot up here, which is two. 
And then the limit as x goes to 3. When I look at the limit, I look at the left side and the right side, right? I look at the two sides, so the positive side and the negative side, and they're both negative 4, which says the limit is negative 4. Now I said let's look at 1. So when I look at 1, at 1, if I look left and I look right, I can see they're not touching. So anytime they're not touching, I know that's going to say there's no limit. 1, I write D in E. But if I go back and look at 1 from the positive side, 1 from the positive side, so the positive's on the right, and I head towards 1, I can see the value is 3. 1 from the negative side, now we're down here, right, and we're headed toward 1 from the left side, and the y value is 1. f of 1 is way up at the top, which is a 4. Okay, now I said let's go to the left side of the graph. I have negative 3 from the negative side. Here's negative 3, the left side is the negative side, and as I head towards it, I end up at a y value of 1. Same thing, negative 3, but on the positive side. So negative 3, I'm coming from the positive side. I also stop at 1. The left side and the right side were equal, so the limit when x goes to negative 3 is 1. So the last question on this page says, what is f of negative 3? Well, when you look around at f of negative 3, you can see an open circle, but it's never closed anywhere else. So that said, this particular value for x is not defined. It's not in the domain. So you can write d and e again. Okay, <clears throat> one more graph. Let's start with the limit as x goes to 3 from the positive side. Here's 3. The right side is this line that's coming up. So I can see the y value is 4. If I look from the negative side, I also get a 4. f of 3, there is no solid dot for 3, so we say f of 3 does not exist. But the limit when x goes to 3, again, I look at the left, I look at the right, they both say 4, so the limit is 4. Also go back and notice the two sides are touching, so there wasn't necessarily a jump, right? There's an open circle, but the left touches the right, which says we have a limit. Let's look at 1. At 1, I see a jump. See this empty space in between there. So all of that space where it jumps says I don't have a limit. So let's write D in E. But if I just look at the positive side, so looking at the positive side of 1, which is right up here, so I went over to the right of 1 and I head back towards 1. I can see the y value is 4. When I look at the negative side of 1, so I'm on this loopy looking part, right? So I'm coming down here and I stop at a y value of 0. f of 1 is 0 because I can see that dot on the x-axis. Now let's go and look at negative 3. So negative 3 from the negative side. Negative 3 from the negative side stops at a y value of 1. Negative 3 from a positive side, it stops at a y value of negative 2. So being bigger than negative 3 and coming towards it, I stop at negative 2. The limit when x goes to negative 3 it does not exist because I got one value to be a 1, one value to be a negative 2, those are not equal, and then f of negative 3 is negative 1. So that part completely different than looking at the limits for the actual f function value. We're only looking at what happens when I plug negative 3 in. That's part 1. Come back for part 2 and we're going to continue this discussion.